for running through all those um, raindrops to get here because uh, we need to be here. I need you. I need you around me and I, I need to be in your midst. And I hope you feel the same way about each other. That's some of what we're learning about what Jesus models and shows us. Uh, if you're new here this morning, we joyfully welcome you. It's our prayer that you experience the living Christ here in our midst. Let me call your attention to some announcements. Would you just look at your bulletin, inside bulletin cover with me? We are coming into the fall startup season, so there are some a number of opportunities that are percolating, and you'll want to know about them. Please note the first announcement that Zone is going to start in uh, just a few weeks, the 22nd, and Lisa Mistel and her teaching team are excited uh, about the new things with the Kairos Quest. Uh, remember, Kairos is the Greek word that means God's timing. It's those oh wow moments when you know God has shown up and he's speaking to you. So uh, be aware of that, parents and grandparents, get your kids here. Um, also, uh, the Scarecrow Festival, an opportunity for us to reach out and care for the Ottawa community, to wear our first press team uh, t-shirts and uh, have a great day in the uh, uh, Jordan Block Park down there, the 29th. So sign up back there. Lisa and uh, her uh, crew are looking for signups. I know that some are being filled. There's more that need to be filled. Today, Alan Good is excited to start a new... Thank you. Alan Gibbs, thank you. She's always so glad to do that from way in the back. <laughs> She's good at it. It's her, it's her job. <laughs> Alan Gibbs is excited to start his new class uh, uh, in the library today at 11 a.m. about the pursuit of Peter. And it will be a great opportunity to learn about the Apostle Peter um, and how that impacts your own life. Speaking about impact in your life, um, all of you are prayers, I know, at various points in your life and each day, and we're trying to learn how to do that. And all of you are actually being prayed for by members of this congregation, by me, your pastor. But you know what? Prayer is a work that we just need help with. And there are some great opportunities for us to come together and, and labor together in prayer. Sunday morning, we just met back in my study at 845. Uh, Mike was there, but you don't have to be up front to come and be part of that prayer time just for 10, 15 minutes. Please come. Also Wednesday morning, Mike's there. Uh, Mike's a good prayer. Here's a good example. He's there Wednesday mornings with me and with Betsy. Um, and we would love to have more people just, we pray for you. We pray for the congregation. And if you don't have anything else to do on a Sunday morning at 8.45 or Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., come pray, would you? You're invited. I'd love to have you. Let me just give you um, some heads up on the flow of worship. Um, since I've gotten back from sabbatical, I'm trying to incorporate some of the, the changes that came with the season of sabbatical, and I'm trying to just do other things that make worship fresh. And if you have any ideas about how worship could be made fresh, let me know. I just would love to hear that. Um, but today notice that we have the passing of peace again. And uh, we're going to sing the Gloria Patri before that, which we usually reserve for the offering time. But we're just going to stand and sing glory to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit uh, as we remember His mercy. And then we're going to share the passing of the peace which is basically a great time to connect with one another and to speak the reality of Christ's peace into each other's lives simply by saying, the peace of Christ be with you and also with you, or some form of that, and then share some joyous fellowship briefly. Um, that's the time that if you have a prayer request that you'd like to write out on the pink prayer request sheets in your pew, that's the time you will want to have had that filled out and bring it forward to put it here in the basket during the passing of the peace. Put it here in this basket. I see one's there already. Um, and I will pick those up for our prayer time, uh, which will come come later. And I, if you have a prayer request, I just want to make sure you know that it's prayed for here on Sunday mornings, but we also pray for it on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. So that's the process this morning. And then we're going to take our offering in response to God's word um, at the end of worship. I think that's all we need to know.
Uh, if not, I'll find out and it'll be too late. So we'll work with it. We have been talking about um, the rhythms of rest and work. Jesus' life is the, the life that we want to model, that we want to follow. That's what a disciple is, one who follows. Jesus shows us a very specific rhythm in his own life of rest, of abiding with his Father, and moving from there into a time of work. And if the work is fruitful, if the rest comes. The rest precedes the work. And in our frenetically paced world, though we sometimes think that our value and our purpose is derived in our ceaseless work and activity, um, we can be pretty depleted. And, and it's good for us to look and see what Jesus will show us. How can we follow Jesus in our rhythms of rest and work? And I just invite you into that exploration today. How does Jesus rest? What would that mean for our rest? How does Jesus work? How can we be fruitful in our work? So let's prepare our hearts to come to rest and work before the Lord as Diane leads us in meditation. stand if you're able and join me with Paul of Worship. Oh, let us sing to the Lord a new song. A new song for our souls to sing. 
Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. He is the God who saves us from death every day. We rejoice at your arms open wide for each of us. And forever we are yours. Please remain standing as we sing this song of praise. So much better. Sorry about that. False start. Here we go. We placed eternity in our hearts. We were yours from the very start. All we've known has been torn apart. Now we have forever. You gave us a song for our souls to sing. Your life was the offering, even death it has lost its sting, now we have forever, and you can't take away what the world did again, we will make for more, we will make for more, at the end of the day. The place at your table, God, paved the way for the poor and lost, called us into your open arms, and now we have forever. And you can't take away what the world did again. We were made for more, we were made for more at the end of the day. For that new song. Please be seated from that joyful place declaring our salvation in Christ. Let's, let's now turn in to the faith we have in Christ and know that it is His blood that is sufficient for our sin to wash us and make us clean. In this season of confession, I will give us opportunity in silence to confess and then after a brief time, I will say, in your mercy, Lord, and you will respond as appropriate there. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, still our hearts and our minds. Help us to remember the light of Christ shines in the darkness. We are full of hope. 
Restore us and renew us in this hour, Lord. From all the things that have distracted us this week, hear us as we consider them and name them before you, those distractions. In your mercy, Lord, forgive us for the times we were cross and short with those we love and spoke unkindly. In your mercy, Lord, forgive us when our selfishness was on display. In your mercy, Lord. Forgive us for the time we had not the courage to speak or to act, but instead we did nothing. In your mercy, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, when we have refused to forgive others when we have struggled even to forgive ourselves. In your mercy, Lord. Amen. The psalmist writes, bless the Lord, O my soul. Let all that is within me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. He forgives all of our iniquity. He heals our brokenness and diseases. And he reaches down and plucks us out of the pit. Friends, believe the good news. God in His mercy is so 100% for you. You are His daughters and His sons. And He loves you. This is the good news. Hear the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand and sing our praise to our glorious God through the glory of Patrick. Peace of the Lord be with you. you. Let's share the peace of Christ.
Children's Church to be led by Mrs. Weckel. You're all invited to come forward. Mrs. Weckel, are you in the room? Oh, there you are. <laughs>
morning's Old Testament lesson is from Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no, you shall, you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Thanks for all the prayer requests that came forward today. A little book here, but uh, we will get through them all. Great job. Father God, our Creator, you created wonder and mystery, your spirit hovering over, even brooding over the darkness. From your spoken word, the creation leapt to life. God, help us to join you your work of creation, to be partners with you, created in your image, meant to join you in your kingdom work. Help us each day to choose to rejoin you. Thank you for your gracious invitation to life. Help us, Lord, when our lives are full of distraction, which might persuade us at times to forget the abundant life that Christ calls us to and fills us with by your Holy Spirit. Help us to see more clearly from day to day. Help us, Lord, when the troubles of life are upon us and peace seems to have run away. Help us to remember Jesus' words. He leaves us with peace that the world cannot know. But those in Christ, we who are Christ's own, we who abide and live in Christ, we can know. Help us to practice the rhythms of life that promote that healthy way of, of living in peace, of resting, working, not letting our work control us, but using our work as a gift from you to honor you and glorify you to provide for our needs and to join you in the greater work of the gospel sharing the love the fruit of christ our world needs that fruit i would pray for places that are ravaged by storms of nature and storms of human nature pray god for the people in the bahamas north end of those islands who are suffering so many thousands without homes destroyed God help them to rebuild help us to help help those who are assigned the tasks of helping rebuild to be fruitful and productive and encourage their hearts Lord many stories of how you save life as everything else is lost. Thank you. God, we pray for our communities in this nation and around the world, communities of faith. God, help us to be bold of faith, even when persecution comes because of the name of Christ. And while we scarcely know that tension here in America, we know our brothers and sisters around the world do suffer. That we pray for the unrest in Hong Kong, for the tensions that are mounting there. We pray for peaceful solutions for liberty and freedom. God, we pray for our leaders. God, help them. Help us. Help us, all of us, from the greatest to the smallest, to 
mind our tongues and our words anywhere we have opportunity to share. May we engage in thoughtful dialogue and even spirited dialogue with differences but loving and respecting each other. Help us, O oh God. That we lift up to you the needs of those here in this community. We pray for the son of a friend of someone here, an eight-year-old boy who has brain has a brain tumor. God, we pray that you will heal this boy even as he starts chemo and radiation this week. Give he and his family strength and peace in the midst of the storm. And we pray for a new opportunity to open up for Carrie. We continue to pray for Corey Waltering as he is at the Eco Challenge in Fiji. Lord, grant him success and keep him safe and give peace to his family. We pray for Rhonda, for her friends Tara and Macy. God, we pray for Rhonda's mom. We pray for Rhonda's sadness at the death of her father a year ago. That we pray for a son to find peace and needed help in overcoming life's difficulties right now. Be with this young man. Thank you, Lord, for grandparents who are great examples for their grandchildren on how to live life in wisdom and goodness and truth. We thank you for Stanley. He had his birthday recently. We just thank you for the gift of Stanley, how much we love him, that he's part of this church family. Bless him in the coming year. And we pray for Mike's, Mike Farrell's sister, Donna, who starts cancer treatment this Tuesday as well. God, heal her. Give her peace and her family peace in the storm. Lord, teach us from your word. Jesus, if I am to say anything meaningful here by my mouth, if our ears are to hear anything meaningful that will help us in following you, it won't be by any of our strength, not mine or not ours, but by yours alone, Jesus, for apart from you, we can do nothing. So we rely wholly upon you, Jesus, and ask you to open our lives to you in new rich ways this day and this week. Christ's name, we pray as you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. This morning's uh, gospel lesson is going to come from John 15. We looked at that part last week. We'll look at two verses this week. Timothy, when we're done, could you please leave verse 5 up on the screen the rest of the time? Thank you. Um, I chose the New Revised Standard Version over the New International Version, which is in your pews, because of a word difference. Uh, there's, there's an older word here, a word that maybe we don't always use, but I think we know what it means, the word abide. It comes from a Greek word meaning literally to stick with it, to remain, to be right in the heart of. So we're going to look at it uh, through that word that the NRSV translates the Greek actually most accurately, abide. Um, so that's what we're going to have today. Will you please stand for the gospel lesson? says to us, abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I am them and, and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please be seated. This sermon is really going to have two parts, and you'll need to come next week to get the completion. Just to give you a, a heads up, uh, we're going to get into some more practical aspects next week, but I just want to get us thinking and, and pose some questions really that Jesus poses to us, that that question might rest in us, and, and even if you will, in a, in a gracious way, to haunt us. It's a question we've dealt with before. Why are you here this morning? What do you want? Remember that question? It was one, it was the cadence question, the question that's repeating again and again last spring as we went through our Lenten series and looked in John's gospel at Jesus and his life, his movement with the disciples. As we moved up toward Easter, Jesus asked, disciples and he asks us what do you want and that's meant to haunt us in a way that takes us deep and says okay what what is my life really after what am i really really wanting and expecting in my life it's jesus very first word in the gospel if you recall in john chapter one and this penetrating question because in john one there are two young men that had been disciples of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist has twice said, look here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that got these two disciples' attention. One of them being Andrew, the youngest brother, younger brother of Peter. Who we know both Peter and, and Andrew became followers of Jesus. But John, Jesus turns around and there's Andrew and another young man following him. And Jesus asks his very first words in John's Gospel, what he addresses that question to them. And their question back to him is revealing. They ask him, where are you staying? Where are you remaining? Where are you abiding? And Jesus answers them, come, and see. You really want to know. You really want to find out what it is you want. Follow me. Come and see. It's the question that Jesus puts to each of us every day when we are looking for Him. He never foists it upon us. It's those moments when you suddenly realize, I think I might have kind of left Jesus behind or I'm not feeling very close to Him. And so we look and Jesus says, What do you want? And our heart's longing in those moments is, We've got to get back to Jesus. And Jesus says, Come, come and see where I am. Come abide with me. Because we're searching. We're wanting to know what life is about. Its purpose. Our purpose. Our hearts are inclined to follow Jesus, I think, a lot of the time. Because we are persuaded by faith that he holds the answer. Because he is the answer. Is it fair for me to to assume that most of us in varying degrees are at that place. We know Jesus is the answer, and that's why we came here today, because we want to continue to figure out how to follow Jesus. But Jesus is always giving us a critical choice in our questions and the answers we seek, and it's an absolute freedom that we are given. Do we want to know where Jesus is? Because Jesus won't force us to know. Do we want to go and see, to follow Jesus and to be his disciple? Because he won't force us to be. He wants us to be. It's what he made us for. And he gives us the freedom to choose to remain in him or not. And I don't know about you, but every day I am in, living in that tension. Do I want to remain in Jesus? Do I want to go and follow Jesus? I hope that doesn't shock you as your pastor. Just don't forget I'm a human being too like you. I have my doubts and, and all the things that assault my life. So that's why the, the, the theme of our church family sabbatical, I think, was 
I think it was a wonderful choice um, that the SRT came up with. That we would be a people seeking rest. Is that rhythm, rest and work? Rest, renewal, follow Jesus. Now moving three years forward from John chapter 1, Jesus now in this, these verses we're looking at, these chapters, he is winding things up with his disciples in Jerusalem. For three years since that time of John 1, they've been following Jesus. They've listened to him. They've shared life day and night. They've, they've watched him perform miraculous signs. They've done their work, their labor together, literally catching fish as well as catching people. They have seen Jesus heal and transform broken and hurting people who are desperate for life. He is the Lord. Jesus has just washed his disciples' feet in John chapter 13 at the Last Supper in that upper room as he makes plain to them that all he's planted in their lives will now indeed grow to great fruitfulness. Keep that in mind when you consider what's about to come. In the moment, say, for instance, when Peter's denying the Lord at the very moment, he has the opportunity to do what he has boldly claimed he would, and he doesn't. He fails. But Jesus is still saying, all I've planted in you, I am fully confident, will come to fruitful growth and continue to do so. And he says that to you and me too, so that we be encouraged. But he cautions them. In this space of John 13, 14, 15, he cautions them that it won't be easy in this world. Would we all say amen? Amen. And there we go. We know it's not easy. It wasn't easy for them. And in fact, as they will soon see from these moments in which Jesus is speaking to them, they will watch as their beloved teacher is ripped away from them and nailed to a cross. And in that moment, in that context, Jesus says, you know, guys, it will seem like life is surely going to fall apart and you will then have to choose daily whether you're going to continue to follow me when it's difficult in life. But Jesus reassures them. My peace I leave with you. I give you peace like the world doesn't know. Don't be afraid of the troubles of the world when they are thrown in. Just keep following. They're walking through the southern part of the city, through the Kidron Valley, and up the Mount of Olives to the Garden of Gethsemane, where, as John records, the ruler of this world, the devil, will spring his supposed trap. I love how Luther says it's, it's actually Satan. Unknown in his own trap. How's that for justice? Jesus sees uh, a vineyard of grapes and vines as they're moving toward the Garden of Gethsemane. And he begins to apply this metaphor to, to the men around him, to the disciples. There are women there too. And he says to them these words, which you heard read I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them, they bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. I love this verse. That's continuing application and teaching in my own life because I find when I am fatigued, when my spirit is discouraged, when I can feel very alone, when I wonder where it is to ground myself and where my anchor is, Jesus' words, they come back to me so clear. It's Jesus. Jesus. I am the vine, Jesus says. You are the branch. If my life then is to know the greatest fruitfulness of living and purpose, of love and joy, of hope, when all hope seems to be dimmed because of my own brokenness or the world's darkness, these words of Jesus bring me back to the source of life. It's Him. So I must choose again today to abide in Jesus. And as Jesus prepares in this moment to go to the cross, He wants us, you, His disciples, 
to remember the most important thing about finding and living the abundant life. source of light for the branches. We are those branches. Life for us as branches connected to the vine can only flow as we stay connected to Jesus and remain and abide in Him, the vine, who alone gives us life. Life flows through Jesus, the life giver to us, the living branches. I mean, here's the truth of life and living. Jesus is apart from me. You can't do nothing. There's a picture, apart. Imagine a branch of grapes apart from the vine. What's going to happen? It will die. There's no way the branch of the grapes will survive. So in similar fashion, how can you or I have or know life apart from Jesus? How will you do it on your own? Without Jesus? Without the vine? Here's another word picture. If you were to take a pair of tongs, reach them in to the center of a hot fire, grab a red hot fiery ember, take it out and put it to the side, what's going to happen to that ember? rich with flame and fire from the fire over here, it's going to fade out to nothing and go cold. It's the same thing about our life in Christ. If we do not choose, and He gives us the freedom to choose, you can choose to be separate. You can choose to be a branch apart from the vine every day. Or you can choose to hear Jesus when He says, Come and see. Come and see. Run. What is it in your life that's driving you today? Your motives, your ambitions, your hopes. What do you want? Are you living with the peace that Jesus says can be yours, even in a chaotic world? A world that has much darkness that will be thrown at you? Would you like that peace? Would you like to learn more about how to follow Jesus and discover the peace and the fruitfulness that He offers to us in Him? Jesus invites you to freely choose to follow Him. It's an invitation to all to be all in with Him, literally to come and move in and abide with Him. To so infuse your life in the life, in the way of Jesus, the way of Jesus, that your life becomes like Him, like His. Would you want this? Next week we're going to take some time to look at the way of Jesus so that we can think about the ways in our lives we can follow His we can move in these rhythms of rest and work that fill us with energy, not deplete us of energy. But fill us with hope and peace, not remove us from hope and peace. There is a way. Jesus shows it to us. That's why He invited the disciples to come and follow Him so that they can learn by the way He did things. And that's what you and I want to do. Jesus models for us we're going to follow that model. Until then, between now and next Sunday, I have an assignment for you. Okay? I want you to think about your own rhythms of resting and working. What is the work you do? There's your occupation, but there's also your vocation, which is the work you do in Christ. And you do that at your occupation. You do that at the grocery store, the work you do in Christ. You do that in quiet moments when you're by yourself and the Lord brings to mind something that He might want to prune in your life because it's getting in the way. Thank you, Carol. Great children's sermon of the day. It's getting in the way of your truly following Him. We'll talk about that next week. But I want you to look at your life, if you would. Look at these verses. 
John 15, 1 through 5. I can do nothing without Jesus Christ. Think about what that means. Think about how you rest and work in Him in that way. And you don't have to take a lot of time to do this. Maybe I'm conceding too much here. But even just five minutes a day. And the thing you might have to prune is getting yourself up five minutes earlier. Just so you can do that. That will bring fruitfulness as pruning always does. You know, it's a rhythm. This rhythm of Jesus that I'm seeking. As, as a man, as a, the man who happens to be your pastor, I'm trying to see how to better understand and practice this in my life. And I'd like to invite you to come along for the ride. Here I am on this gorgeous, sunny, early September Day. It's Wednesday, September 4th, and I am out in a beautiful world, enjoying the Lord's creation. See the cornfields? Been riding through the soybean fields, which even despite the slow and faulty start we got up to this year, our poor farmers, our dear farmers, there is yet abundance in God's creation. I don't know if you can see that with the sun. Anyway, the creation speaks to us about God's purposes for his people. Namely, that as we abide in Christ, and Christ promises to abide in us, that we will be fruitful beyond measure. And looking at this incredibly fruitful creation, There it is. It is telling us that far more fruitful are we to be as we abide in Jesus, we rest in Jesus, and he abides in us. And then we're ready to go out and do the work of our lives, and most importantly, the work of his kingdom. I love being out here praying. It's my abiding time quiet solitude and I love praying for you praying for you the, the dear people in the flock that God has charged me to shepherd and praying for the issues that I'm aware of in your lives rejoicing with you where you rejoice laboring in prayer for you where you are facing tough challenges as we all do but let us never forget that as we abide in Christ and go out into the work he calls us to we're strong in him Paul says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me that's what abiding in Christ is and him abiding in us he does what's necessary to give us grace and strength for each new day even the days that are tough so wherever you are today, may you know the joy and the grace of abiding in Christ, resting in Him, taking rest, and then swinging into the rhythm of your work, renewed, rested, following Jesus. How about that? Love you guys. So how about it? You ready to ride along? Let's take just a few moments just to be quiet. Be still. Let the Lord speak to you. What is He saying? Let's see.
had a prayer request that you didn't get a chance to write, please put them in the offering plate, and we'll be praying for them on Wednesday morning also. At this time, with the ushers, please come forward for the receiving of our gifts and tithes. Heavenly Father, you are the one that gives us all that we could ever need, all that we could ever want. Please hold us close in your world and we just pray that you will, that we will learn how to abide in you and stay on your vine where you can make us fruitful in this world around us. The Lord has asked you to bless these offerings and these gifts that they may bring forth to you the work that needs to be done in this world. First through your son's most holy name we pray. Amen.
I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my exceeding abundantly, beyond all that we could ever ask or imagine, that according to the, His power that is at work within us, to Him be the glory through us as church and through Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. And go in peace.